Okay, so um, next we've got um, Peter O'Donnell, who's one of our lecturers who's based at the Caulfield campus, who's, who's going to tell you about the Bachelor of Information and Technology Systems. Thanks, Anne. Yeah, I get, I get the name of the degree wrong as well. It's the Bachelor of Information Technology and Systems degree. Now, before I talk about anything, I want to take a photo of you. So just um, jump up and down like crazy. Yeah. Ripper. <coughs> Beautiful, thank you. I can l at least tell, tell my kids who are at home playing Minecraft that I was here. Now, I want to, um, oh, thanks very much. I want to I talk about our degree that we offer at Caulfield. Um, and that's going to confuse you a bit because how boring is it from somebody from the university to come and talk about degrees? So I'm also going to share you a secret. And actually, I think it's a really important thing. But that, what Katie was doing before, you're probably going to experience as well. And it's a tough couple of years you've got ahead of you making decisions about what you're going to do when you grow up. Who gets that from their aunties and uncles? I, I still do. And what a stupid question. When you think about it, you guys, you know, I saw a whole bunch of you saying you're in year 10, maybe some year 9s, year 11s, maybe year 12s. If you go to uni and you graduate, we're talking about what kind of job you want in maybe five or six years. And then when you think of your career, and you're as old as somebody like me, what kind of jobs are there going to be in 10 years or 20 years or 30 years? Who the hell knows? Nobody does. And then there's the people that say, well, just do what you like. Just do what you're good at. And that's not bad advice, but what if what you like and what you're good at, there's no jobs in? <laughs> Luckily, the secret I want to share you, with you is that actually, as a country, we face a really huge problem right now. Nobody's talking about it. It's not in the newspapers. But our economy, and really most developed economies, rely on two things. They rely on oil and any product you buy, even computer products, something like 40% of the cost is transport. So without petrol and without oil to make our manufacturing work, you know, it doesn't, our economy dies and you only have to we go to war in the Middle East over oil we, you know on the news every night you hear what the price of oil is in you know with Texas crude whatever the hell that is so we all acknowledge oil is important politically and geographically it causes the world all sorts of problems and we're burning it and maybe warming the climate the other thing that's a problem is software you cannot run a business without software today you can't just think about what we take for granted. You walk into a shop and you use, well, maybe, who's got a credit card or a debit card? You know, we use FPOS without thinking about it. Buy stuff online without thinking about it. You, who's got a part-time job? You know, it's a bit of software that gets you paid on time. <laughs> What's a credit card? You can't enroll in computer games boot camp. You can't play a game. You know, look how big the games industry is. Businesses can't grow without software, they can't work without software, and we've got a problem. And I'll just, I'll just share that problem with you now. First off, let me, um, let me do something that perhaps will interest you a bit more than just raving on about a degree. Now, just generally, look, this is seek.com. Whoa, wireless access at Monash, what's going on there? <laughs> it did reject me. This is called a snafu. Uh, anyway, <coughs> doesn't matter. I'll uh, just pretend that that worked. Just pretend that worked. What I was going to do um, until the wireless infrastructure got in our road was do a search on games development for graduates. And the good news is for most of you guys that love playing games is you can actually, as you know, you can get jobs in it. And our degree at Caulfield for BITS, we have a major in games development that is pretty good preparation for... Um, applying for those graduate positions in games. But if you just do a search for graduate IT positions, you will see there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of jobs for graduate IT positions. And at Clayton, they've got, they've got a whole series of degrees there, computer science, software engineering, Bachelor of um, uh, Business Information Systems, you'll hear, you'll hear from that. Oh, good. There we go. 364. That's pretty cool. Um, that's a lot of jobs. Now, let me also just go to IT. Thanks for fixing that, by the way. Where is IT? There it is. 
And let me just go graduate. Well, let me spell first. Grad, you at graduate jobs in IT, 302. Now, that, I reckon that's a lot of jobs, but that shows one month's worth of jobs. Do you know how many in the state of Victoria, how many IT graduates there are produced every year? Yeah, not bad. About 400 across all the universities. There's 300 jobs a month nationwide, right? In Victoria, it's probably 100 a month for graduates. We, the university sector, just aren't producing enough people with the skills to produce the software our economy wants, our economy desperately needs. So if you guys are liking software, liking games, one, we've got a course that'll teach you how to do it, and that's kind of cool. Two, if you just like computers in general, or you know, maybe you go and do a games degree, the stuff that you learn in a games degree, how to work out how people interact with computers, what they want, how to build software, how to document it, how to maintain it, how to test it, how to work in teams, all of that stuff you also need, when, whether you're building a game or you're building a database system for a bank or a payroll system for somebody so they can get, get paid in their part-time job, those skills are pretty transferable. At Caulfield, the degree we offer, it's called a BITS, a Bachelor of Information Technology and Systems, and the idea is that within the course, we've built into it that kind of flexibility that Anne was talking about before. You enrol in a course, it sounds good, you get halfway through and you realise, oh, I don't really like it. A lot of students decide, I want to play games and I want to make them, or they think, oh, I want to build systems for banks, and then they think, oh, actually, I want to make games. So we've built into this degree a whole series of majors that you can do that range from enterprise information management, uh, applications development, multimedia, if you like building, say, flash animations, that's the kind of degree for you, through to games development. The requirements for each major vary a bit. Generally, we just want English. Um, but if you do games development, you do need a bit of maths. Um, so there's, there's, you know, I don't know, you do lots of C++, and really to, to learn how to program AI and do the physics of a game, you really do need to, to understand, some pretty, understand some pretty hardcore maths. Um, but, say, building systems for a business, the maths isn't that important. We borrow the algorithms the computer scientists have invented for us, and it's all about how you work in a team and how you interact with people and, and you know, get to understand their requirements. So you guys face a whole bunch of choices. Obviously today you want to play games. You're going to get hammered from your parents about what are you going to do for a career. Log on to Seek like I did and show them how many jobs there are in games and that should keep them quiet for a while. Uh, it doesn't work. Log, click on a few and show them what they can get paid. Some other things to think about. Maybe you want to work in a big company. Maybe you want to work in a little company. Maybe you want to work in a company that has a nice um, career progression. Maybe you want to get together with a couple of friends and, and start a startup and, and take some risks. Whatever you do, just, just some, some general stuff. Be excited about your job, I reckon. Whatever it is you choose, if it gets you out of bed in the morning and you kind of think, you know, today's the day I want to take a risk, then you kind of, you know, you've probably picked the right career. So when you're choosing what university to go to, what course you go to, look for flexibility, look for options, look for the ability to swap and change, but do look for stuff that you like and do look for stuff that you're good at. Um, so Monash, great place to be. A whole heap of good reasons to be at Monash, and I'm, geez, I'm starting to sound like a salesperson now, sorry about that. Um, you know, the opportunity to tra travel and study abroad, and, and, you know, flexibility, say, between Clayton and Caulfield, um, nice staff, and, you know, great things like Computer Games Boot Camp that maybe you can help them organise. That's all I want to say. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Woohoo! Uh, and, uh, oh, is that a question? Oh, we've, we've got a question. I have, I have no giveaways, but thank you for I your question. Oh. What are, you, what are your own experiences in like the um, IT world and so on? So, as you mentioned before about how to get like a business together, what, what um, personal experience have you had with that? Yeah, look, so my area is as far away from games as you can get. My personal area is called business intelligence. I'm interested in research and teaching. Um, 
managers get reports showing them how their business is going. And actually, I think the reports they get are absolute rubbish. They've got all these 3D pie charts all over it, and industry spends gazillions of dollars each year building reporting systems. They get data from all over the place, um, and they pump it through so that managers can make decisions, understand how much we sold last week, who's, who's selling well, who's not selling well, what products are selling, what products aren't selling. And generally, the systems are really built badly. But my experience over, I've been in it now for 20 odd years, which is a bit scary. Even though it's really exciting and the technology changes and the latest thing is we hold terabytes of data in memory now so that managers can get real time updates of what's sold, is that actually the problems that we have today are the problems we still had 20 years ago. It's working out what kind of numbers they need to see, what's important to their business, what needs to be measured. The actual measurement of it's not hard, the collecting of the data is not particularly hard, but, but working that bit out, um, and, and to be honest, we've got all these cool tools now, and I think we're probably doing a better job of it 20 years ago, um, which is, you know, I think we're a bit blinded by some of the, like this in-memory stuff. If you look up SAP HANA, um, terabytes in RAM, it's scary. Um, but I, I don't think it necessarily gives businesses value. So uh, that's, that's my take. Yeah. Any other questions before we go and have lunch? No, we're done. Good. Thank you. Woohoo. Oh, prizes, prizes. Ah, you, know, you see, if I send you away with prizes now, you may not come back. But I guarantee you there will be prizes first thing 2 o'clock when we come back from lunch. So make sure you're here at 2. Also, also, then, we'll have Cool Master. Z will be back up to give you another outstanding presentation. We'll have Gigabyte talking about motherboards and overclocking. So make sure you are back here on the dot of 2 o'clock. Have a great lunch. Thank you so much. <laughs>